At the end of the day, there are six levels for cleaning records that a vinyl collector is gonna find themselves in that I've just out of nowhere made up. Where you fit into or which level you are on will depend on a lot of factors, but let's explore these levels today. Let's see which level I'm on and which levels even matter. about why to make yet another video about cleaning records, but the information needs to be out there. And I thought about this, I buy used records often from Discogs from around the world. So there's a chance that I might buy your used record. And if you didn't take good care of it, or if you sprayed some junk on it and just wiped it around, I might get stuck with that without even knowing. So if anything, this is a ploy to get people to use the correct methods and to take better care of your records since any one of us might end up owning your used vinyl at some point. This video is meant to be an overview for any collector of vinyl and not an in-depth depth look at a specific process or how to. I will make some product recommendations or examples as I go, but no, I have not used all of these things, so therefore I am not the best source for an in-depth opinion, but also no, I am an obsessed SOB when it comes to cleaning vinyl. I've been collecting records for over 20 years, and one thing that I've learned very early on is there is a lot of snake oil out there and fake products that will do more harm to your vinyl than not. And after getting records that were well kept, but still 50 years old and still sounded amazing, I opted to never clean my records since I chopped it up to one, I didn't want to further damage them, and two, I didn't know how or where to even start, but I know that using something like this and just spraying liquids on it and crushing them into the grooves cannot be a good way to go. I've watched all the videos on cleaning records that there are out there, and I've read a lot of the articles out there on it, and I've been dipping my toe into actually the cleaning process myself for the past year, and I can kind of say that there are six levels. What are you doing? Levels. <laughs> levels. Yeah. of cleaning records that you're eventually gonna hit as you continue collecting and amassing more vinyl and considering how to handle it and preserve it. The more you do this, the more you're gonna love it and you're gonna get obsessed, but I'm gonna spare you some time if you're a new collector. I'm gonna help guide you if you're a novice like me or someone who has a lot of good vinyl and a pretty decent stereo, but nothing crazy. And I'm gonna to attempt to speak to some of the higher end guys out there about what they should do with their super million dollar machines and records and all that stuff. Before I start the list here, know this. You need to clean your pieces of vinyl. It is a huge upgrade, probably the biggest upgrade that you can do. I am a source guy, so I believe that it all starts with the source, and I was blown away when I heard an actual cleaned record, and out of all the things that I've ever done, it is 100% the most noticeable difference in my vinyl journey collecting. That said, there are wrong ways to clean and wrong products to use, and you need to hear the knowledge from people that actually know, and I'm basing a lot of this knowledge in this video from two main sources. One, perfectvinylforever.com, and two, The InGroove and Mike Esposito, and I use them as sources since they've cleaned more records than probably anybody on the planet, and they both offer services that we'll get into later. And I'm linking to videos of theirs as well below. So this is meant to be like a one-stop shop to gauge where you are as a collector of vinyl, and then from here, decide how to move on forward on the level that you're on. Here at the beginning, the first thing you should be doing is getting a good carbon fiber brush to just lightly dust off your vinyl. And if you just started and you don't have a record cleaning machine, then this is the only thing that you should be doing. Besides replacing paper sleeves and not using PVC outer sleeves, which we'll get to in another video. But do not, I repeat, do not spray your records and clean them with a microfiber cloth. It will do more harm and you are just mashing in the dirt and adding chemicals at the same time. It might even look like they're getting clean. Believe me, they are not. And this comes from people that I'm gonna mention in level four, so please keep watching. But really, if you don't have a record cleaning machine of some kind that I'm gonna mention as we go on in this video, only use this brush to take off some surface dirt dry and do not spray down the records.
Record cleaning does not have to be super expensive. There are products out there well under four to $500 that will do a great job at some level of cleaning. Most of these are vacuum cleaners. And at this level, the cheapest, and in my opinion, the best way to go is something like this, which is the vinyl vac, which is a simple PVC attachment that goes on to the end of a mini shop vac. Both the mini shop vac and the vinyl vac can be had for less than $100. And the reason why I suggest this is because things like the Record Doctor or even the Project or especially the VPI, at the end of the day, they are a tube and a vacuum. And most of them are made up of particle board that's gonna rot out and they're closed boxes that you can't fix. And again, liquid's definitely gonna get in there. And they all cost well over $300 for a relatively good one. And some of them are even in the thousands. So why not just get a vinyl vac for about $30 and a shop vac for about $30. And if either component fails, you can easily and cheaply replace them. And you are getting the same results in any vacuum cleaning. A vacuum is a vacuum. Don't let anyone tell you any different. You do need a cleaning solution at this level to help with the vacuum cleaning and a light surfactant should be used. Now, this is a very hot topic lately, but you need to get into the grooves of the record, which are micron levels and water alone is just not gonna do that. So just be sure to rinse thoroughly to get the surfactant out and use a heavily diluted solution and you should be safe. You can learn more about this process and the cleaning with the vinyl vac in a video that I made right here. Just know that I have added a step for just rinse with distilled water and vacuuming off the distilled water only in the process to get the surfactant out like we just mentioned. Now I'm personally right about at this level. I've been using the last cleaning method for some time now, but I realize ultrasonic cleaning is the best way and most effective way to clean your records. It's also not a cheap way. And some machines you need to be careful about and others you definitely get what you pay for. At level three of being a collector and cleaning your vinyl, you may not want to or even be able to spend thousands of dollars on a cleaning machine. And it really, really, really might not make any sense at all. I would say if you have less than a thousand records, you should probably stick to the previous levels. I have about 1500 records in my collection and I've been collecting now for about 20 years or so and I'm just tipping my toe into this level and I'm still considering this level to be a sub $500 level and the best record cleaning ultrasonic machine on this level is the humming guru or the humming guru I don't even know how technically you pronounce it I mean I always kind of want to put humming guru but I guess it's technically humming guru I don't know we'll just I, I completely digress here you can also consider Amazon alternatives that might be a little cheaper but they all really do have some pitfalls here and there and they all actually need some extra parts if you're going to start spending $200 to start with you're going to eventually getting up to the price of the humming guru and they've already done a lot of the work for you this is an ultrasonic cleaning machine that's entry level and you will get good results for not a huge investment Ultrasonic cleaning actually creates microscopic bubbles that implode, not explode, and cause jets of water to get into the microscopic grooves of the record. The Humming Guru is great because it's a one button process. You set it and you come back from 10 minutes and you have a clean record. Now, there are many caveats to that. I've seen a lot of people talk about different ways to get better results that aren't just setting it and forgetting it. But for the most part, this is the best option at this level. And really, this is where most record enthusiasts are probably just gonna stop. You're gonna get really good results at this level. Most importantly, you won't be damaging your records at this point, and you will get a noticeable improvement on sound quality, which in my opinion is the most important thing. Anything from here on out is going to have a huge cost versus reward analysis that you and only you are gonna be able to determine. A large portion of the content of this video, meaning the cold hard facts that I'm giving you, come from watching Steve at Perfect Vinyl Forever talk about his service and his process. In my opinion, if you want the cleanest, best sounding records, even beyond levels five and six, which we're gonna go over in a minute, sending your records for this archival 3.1 process is the way to go. First off, he has done 
all the science. And he has cleaned thousands of records. His main point when talking about cleaning is the multi-step process where each step in the process that you do is going to have a give and a take. And each step needs to basically counteract the previous step. Now, I don't have time for all this. I don't also have the equipment for all this. This service offers three levels of cleaning before ultrasonic level cleaning, and their ultrasonic machines operate at way higher hertz than any other machine on the market, including $6,000 ones. This process is not cheap. You need to send at least 16 records in at a time at $8 a record. You have to mail out your records. Now this is your precious, possibly most valuable vinyl that you have to ship in the mail and they supply you with mailers, but it can be a little scary. That said, you will have the best sounding records, period. This is the pinnacle. His process, he keeps refining it, which means it's just going to even get better as it goes. It's very scientific. It's very logical. It's been tested and repeated. And people with way more and way more valuable vinyl than me have recommended it. So really, this should be the last level. You are not going to get better Sonics than going to this service. I will also mention the InGroove at this level, since he offers to clean records that you buy from him. But I don't think you can send your records to him to get cleaned but he has a great process as well that we're going to get back to in level six but think about it when someone else makes a sandwich for you or someone else cleans your house or someone else washes your car it always looks or tastes better than when you do it yourself so even just that alone going to a professional record cleaning service like perfect vinyl forever is not going to be any different and you're going to feel the same way about your results Level five is a weird place to be. And to be honest, so is level six. Again, since you're not going to get the best sonic quality from an at-home solution versus sending it to a service that specializes in cleaning and doing everything that you're attempting to do but don't really know how and you just spent $4,000 on this machine and you're probably gonna rely on YouTube to get the best results from it. Now those results are probably gonna be really good. Don't get me wrong. Anything from level two on is going to give you amazing results. That I can speak to firsthand, even though I haven't used all of these options. Even just vacuum cleaning is a huge upgrade to your vinyl. The degritter is the cheapest ultrasonic that delivers 120 hertz of vibration, which is the way that it makes those micro bubbles. And those micro bubbles are actually smaller at 120 hertz. Now for reference, The cleaning service Perfect Vinyl Forever uses machines that operate at 220 hertz. No home machine even has that. The degritter is recommended by Perfect Vinyl Forever as the best at home solution. And I've seen many people speak to its power, but it's $4,000. And though it's not the most expensive unit out there, which is crazy, that's a lot of money. And I would argue heavily, if you have less than a thousand pieces of vinyl and especially less than 500 or less, I would definitely just go out and buy more vinyl. You can get a lot of amazing Led Zeppelin OG pressings for $4,000. Focus on your collection first. I purposely started changing the word investment to spending in these last two levels because there are some huge considerations at these levels and the costs are really, really high. Personally, I think the degritter and even the humming guru are both overpriced for actually what they do, which is a perfect segue into level six. Level six is basically you are spending a lot of money on a cleaning machine. This is not an investment in any way unless you start a business with it, but even then you're gonna need a lot more. Mike at the InGroove, as I mentioned, cleans all day, six days a week using four KL audios, and he does it only for his customers that buy records from him as a paid option. The KL audio is basically the only thing in this range. It is over $6,000, but that is just the machine. 
If you want the record multi-spindle, another $1,000. If you want it to be quiet in your house, that's another $1,000. This will easily put you back $9,000 when all is said and done after taxes and shipping. And go watch Mike from the InGroove talk about his KL Audio setup and the filtration system that he needs to go with it and all the things that you still need to do to get the best operation out of it. At this point, you could have sent your entire collection to Perfect Vinyl Forever for a deep, deep archival cleaning process to your entire collection. Let's do the math real quick. If you have a thousand records that you wanted to get archival 3.1 cleaning at 16 records at $160 dollars per package you would need to send 62 packages and that would total nine thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars for your entire collection to be archival cleaned which would give you way better results than doing it yourself with a kl audio and you don't have to do anything except for just sit back and wait for your records to come back now that's a little insane and i'm just trying to put that into perspective but if you go to Perfect Vinyl Forever site, they actually have packages for 700 or even a thousand records. And I think they're even cheaper than $9,000. So it's not really even that far fetched to think about sending your entire record collection to them. And it would be cheaper than the KL Audio. Now those are all the levels. And I'm gonna build these different levels, you know, with steps. <laughs> and it'll all be carpeted with a lot of pillows. <laughs> You know, like ancient Egypt. Mm. <laughs> And let's just mention some things that were not mentioned in any of these levels, starting with the spin clean. No, it's a tub of dirty water. Unless you're gonna vacuum clean or ultrasonic clean after the fact, it's kind of pointless and it's way too expensive at $90 for just basically a plastic tub. No to the spin clean. Absolutely no to these old school disc cleaners where you just spray stuff on them and wipe it around. This thing's gonna get moldy over time and all the dirt from your previous record cleanings is gonna stay on it. You're just gonna put that onto your other records. These are good for dry dusting, but actually a carbon fiber brush is even a better way to go. Wood glue, no, just no. Slime, no. Rollers that pick up lint, I would not recommend those. Tap water, no. Dish soap, no. Alcohol, eh. Only if it's 99% isopropyl and only if it's extremely diluted and only if you're going to thoroughly rinse with distilled water only. Air cans, no. And blowing on your records, no way. You can't blow on a record. You're going to get spittle or droplets all over it. Now, I hope to get a ton of comments telling me your solutions and how they work for you and they've worked fine over the years. I would challenge anyone who has not gone beyond level two, which is some kind of record cleaning machine, to try it and tell me if you think that your old method of dipping them in the sink or wiping them down with some kind of old thing works any better. At the end of the day, there are really only a few things that need to happen to get a record clean. You need to get down into those micron grooves, disrupt the dirt or contaminant, then remove that solution and dirt and contaminant quickly. Ultrasonic cleaning alone does not do this. You can't let the record air dry after the fact, so you need to remove that solution, even the distilled water, by either vacuum cleaning it or fan drying it with the built-in fan dryers that are in some of these more expensive machines. Okay, so which level are you? Tell me in the comments aggressively. Be sure to write a lot of comments, especially if they are negative or if you think I'm full of crap. In the meantime, I have not been sponsored by any of the products or services mentioned here at all. I have never even used some of them, but if you found something helpful here, please consider subscribing. I would love to test any of these units. If the Degritter or KO Audio wants to send me one, I would absolutely love to see a direct comparison of a clean piece of vinyl on one of those machines versus sending it to the perfect vinyl service. So please keep watching because maybe enough people will subscribe and like these videos so that these bigger companies will want to send me this stuff out so I can do these tests. I have links in the description to Sonic Flare and Perfect Vinyl Forever talking about this, as well as Norman Maslov talking about record cleaning with a lot of heavyweights who have a lot more vinyl and know a lot more about this than I do. I got the links below. I gotta go. I will see you guys on the next one.